Hello and welcome to today's webinar on cloud versus on-premises CRM. Today we'll walk you through uh, five considerations to keep in mind when you're choosing between cloud and on-prem. I am Brian Dunn. I'm Director of Marketing at Quantus CRM. And with me today is Miriam Florio, Senior Consultant. I'd like to thank everyone for taking the time to attend. And I'll just take a minute uh, up front here to cover some of the call logistics before we start our presentation. Today, everyone is going to be in listen-only mode. So if you have questions, just type them into the question box and go to webinar control panel, and we'll get to those at the end of the webinar. Also, this webinar will be recorded, so if you miss some details and need to view it again, or if you know someone you think uh, might benefit from the information and they're not here today, then uh, you can just uh, visit us uh, on our events page at quantacrm.com tomorrow. Um, yeah, so tomorrow we should have the uh, recorded presentation out there. Uh, and uh, while you're on the events page, you will see our upcoming webinars as well as recording of past events. So if you find this one valuable or if you have some interest in other topics concerning Microsoft Dynamics CRM, then you can sign up for the other webinars there. Today, we're, we should uh, clock in right around half an hour. So without further delay, without further delay, let's get started. Uh, you can move me forward one, Aaron. Thank you. All right, first up, we're going to cover some uh, definitions. Um, this is going to just make sure we're all on the same page, talking about the same thing as we go through the webinar. Um, first on the list here is on-premises. Um, so uh, just to define that, this is the conventional approach uh, to CRM. And that's where you install CRM on site, um, on your own computers, in your data center, and your own IT people are managing it. It's just kind of the, the typical old school way to do things. Um, then the next one, next bullet there is on demand or cloud. And, um, you know, for purposes of today's, today's webinar, today's presentation, um, I'm just going to use this as a generic term to, to refer to anything that is not on prem. So if you're uh, dealing with SaaS, which is a software as a service or it's uh, hosted, um, I'm calling it all that cloud for today. Uh, some of the finer points there, uh, like I said, software as a service, that's SAAS. That's a web-based software. Usually you purchase it through a subscription, which means the uh, application is available to you um, as you need it through your computers, uh, you know, through the web browser, like Internet Explorer, or Safari on a Mac. Um, your, excuse me, your uh, internal IT resources or a service partner, um, they'll configure the CRM for you, and then the uh, SAAS or SaaS provider maintains the application in the background. Um, hosted, that's um, basically a combination of SaaS and on-prem. Typically, you own the software there. It's like software that you purchased, and then you're just paying somebody to uh, have the software live on their server. And then you just access that through the Internet, usually through a browser, um, using Citrix or Terminal Server on the back end. Next slide, please. Okay, now we're getting into the main event. But first, a uh, little background. So internet-based technologies um, have played an important role in the development of modern CRM applications over the last couple of years. Uh, they've really been critical um, as a driving force behind the rise of cloud CRMs and have also enabled uh, on-prem CRM vendors to dramatically simplify deployment and administration. As a result, CRM has become more accessible, um, adoption rates have increased, and companies today just enjoy unprecedented choice when it comes to, you know, how they want to purchase, consume, so, you know, support their new uh, business applications. However, on the deployment side, that's a how rather than a what question. And um, competing CRM solutions are kind of really separated by a broad range of considerations, uh, more than just the choice between cloud or on-premises. a lot of functionality you have to take into consideration there. Um, additionally, the, the relative advantage of uh, or disadvantage of one deployment type or the other is entirely dependent upon your own individual objectives and circumstances, which are likely to change over time and vary according to a number of uh, criteria. Uh, today, our goal is going to be to provide a clear understanding of the context of deployment within the overall selection process, and then uh, examine the five most important considerations associated with CRM selection and discuss how cloud and on-prem uh, deployments impact on those. Um, so the considerations are there on your screen. Your user empowerment, uh, investment timeline, or total cost of ownership, uh, data sensitivity, availability of internal IT resources, and integration. Uh, next slide, please. OK, 
okay, we're going to start with uh, user empowerment. So a, a CRM solution should provide powerful functionality that supports your users in their daily activities, and it should be sufficiently flexible so that it can be configured and customized to meet your particular needs. Uh, deployment type is going to impact both functionality and flexibility. So the functional breadth and depth of CRM solution, um, they really vary significantly from uh, vendor to vendor. Therefore, it's important to clearly set out your functional requirements up front when you're starting the process in order to identify the solution that's going to provide you with the best fit over the lifetime of your installation. While you initially focus on the rollout of CRM within your sales organization, extending it to encompass marketing and customer service functions might be an objective over the longer term. So you might start with sales and then roll it out into marketing and customer service. So therefore, you should conduct a detailed examination of any potential uh, CRM feature set as a first step. You make sure the solution you're considering is what you need. Now, whether at the point of initial rollout or later in the solution's uh, life cycle, you should be mindful of the configuration and customization requirements of the new CRM solution. Configuration refers to basic changes in areas such as simple workflow, access and security, user provisioning, team membership, user preference. It, an administrator and user level configuration flexibility is going to enable you to map uh, your new CRM solution more closely to the needs of your users and your business processes. And both cloud and on-prem solutions generally provide a wide range of configuration options. Now, uh, customization refers to more complex functional requirements. That those are things like um, um, creation of custom entities, custom screens, custom tabs, complex workflows. Moving on to accessibility. So uh, companies usually expect their CRM system to be available to all, all customer-facing staff, uh, wherever that staff is located. So if you have field-based or remote office employees, then uh, mobile access is going to be a must-have requirement for your new CRM system. So what does all this mean when you're choosing between on-prem and, and cloud? So uh, just to kind of wrap up on, on this slide here, it means you should fully define your functional requirements up front and then determine which solution and deployment type is going to provide you with the best fit over the lifetime of your installation. Um, you should understand to what extent your functionality, or sorry, your functional requirements can be addressed out of the box, which ones will require further configuration and customization. And if you have a remote office or field-based staff, then um, your new CRM system should be available to these users, no matter where they are or how they're going to access the CRM system. And if your staff requires CRM access on a mobile device, like a PDA or a smartphone or tablet, then you should specifically ensure that um, this type of functionality is provided by your new CRM system. Uh, next slide, please. Okay. Um, the average life cycle of a CRM solution today is, is over five years. So arriving at a clear understanding of the likely total cost of ownership associated with any new CRM deployment is an important consideration in the selection process. Um, deployment choice influences, um, you know, TCO or total cost of ownership considerably, and um, you should compare the investment cost structures of both models, both on-prem and cloud, thoroughly uh, before we make a decision. Um, on-prem CRM is usually going to require more terms of upfront capital investment. Um, you're going to write that down over the lifetime in your system. And uh, on the other hand, cloud CRM involves fixed periodic subscription payments over the whole life of the solution. And there's generally, you know, fewer upfront costs with a cloud system over an on-prem system. So therefore, cloud can provide several advantages to companies with limited budgets, and it does not, it doesn't require the uh, same upfront expenditure expenditures on software or hardware or implementation services. But um, when viewed beyond the near term, though, uh, cloud solutions can equal or exceed costs when compared to their on-prem peers. So again, you got to look at this, this price, you know, look at the total cost over time of your solution. Um, but again, cloud, will, cloud is going to suit organizations that wish to benefit from lower upfront investment and uh, prefer predictable fixed monthly costs. Um, so regarding accounting, um, cloud and on-prem deployment models are treated differently for accounting purposes. An on-premises solution can be uh, included on the company's balance sheet as an asset and written down over a multi-year period. Uh, cloud subscriptions, though, are generally accounted for in the uh, period that they fall to. Um, and then when you're comparing costs, you should uh, be sure to carry out a like-for-like -like comparison. 
as functionality and product capabilities can vary significantly between providers. Uh, it's also important to understand the functional differences between the additions or versions of the same product. It may be the case that some functionality isn't available in entry-level packages. Um, and so you just have to remember to pay attention to which version of the software you're looking at when you're comparing you know, between different software packages. Um, you should also be mindful of charges for incremental service additions. Uh, in the case of cloud, um, these kind of charges could be for additional storage or backing up the data. So, um, you know, when you're going into an agreement, you need to clearly understand, you know, what's provided, what's not provided, and then what's an option for an additional cost. And finally, the, the fact that CRM is delivered on the cloud doesn't preclude the, the need to retain IT resources for enhancement and system administration. And those could be external or internal, but custom, customization and integration requirements, uh, as an example, can have a significant impact on the total cost of ownership of both cloud and on-premises solutions. So to sum up, um, you need to carry out a detailed analysis of all the foreseeable costs over the expected you know, life of your new CRM solutions. And uh, regardless of whether it's cloud or on-prem, number which one you select, you should uh, factor in a realistic cost for uh, consulting and system administration activities that are going to need to be carried out. And then remember that uh, cloud CRM can provide several cost advantages to companies with a limited budget or requirement, or, or, or excuse me, or a requirement for just a short-term CRM deployment. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, so uh, while on-prem on-premises CRM uh, retains customer data in-house, cloud CRM, of course, is going to store customer data at a third-party facility, and um, the uh, degree of your customer data, sensitivity, data sensitivity um, is going to influence uh, on your deployment choice. So for certain companies, customer data is perceived to be too sensitive to be hosted externally. So, you know, for companies like that, then on-premises CRM is a, a natural solution. However, keep in mind that cloud CRM may actually provide greater data security and protection when compared to on-premises deployments, especially in the case of uh, small and medium-sized businesses. Um, hosting customer data in a, you know, in a highly secure, purpose-built third-party data center with high levels of redundancy and backup and monitoring, uh, all that may deliver a little security protection that, that can't be achieved cost-effectively internally at a small and medium-sized company. So um, with that in mind, too, uh, you have to remember that the sophistication of hosting operations does vary significantly between cloud vendors. So, you know, Besides just comparing on-prem to cloud, when you're choosing between cloud vendors, you also need to do a comprehensive review on any potential solution provider's data center. Um, that just needs to be a core component of any cloud evaluation process. Next slide, please. So the availability of internal IT resources is another key factor to consider when selecting a potential CRM solution. Uh, the initial project rollout and ongoing support and administration will require IT expertise. And again, that could be internal or external or both. Um, therefore, your choice of deployment model should uh, also reflect the availability of in-house uh, IT staff. So um, again, regardless of whether your CRM solution is deployed in the cloud or on-premises, uh, you need to ensure that it delivers adequate performance and availability to meet your users' needs. So um, you know, day-to-day -day activities like um, provisioning new users or importing data or writing reports or carrying out upgrades, um, all that can e equate to a significant increase in IT workload over the life of the CRM product. Um, also, when uh, an issue arises, you, you need to make sure that there's a clearly defined support structure in place which provides resolution on a timely basis. So um, ongoing administration uh, can represent a sizable burden for uh, companies deploying on-premises CRM. Um, especially for the first time, and particularly for uh, small and medium-sized businesses, which usually operate with limited IT sources. So um, the cloud can represent an uh, attractive uh, proposition, like for these type of companies you know, with the limited IT resources. Um, a key consideration for companies considering uh, cloud CRM solutions is that you should uh, carry out a detailed review of the vendor support services, clearly understand service level obligations, um, especially regarding uh, scheduled availability, case response times, and how they handle uh, 
application upgrades. There are lots of those. Um, it's a good idea to do uh, customer reference calls and use those in the evaluation, just of, of anyone you're looking at. Um, and even if your company has sufficient internal IT resources um, to deploy and manage your new CRM installation, uh, just the availability of having uh, on-ground expertise you know, from your CRM vendor or from a certified partner is reassuring, like especially if you're doing it for the first time, and it can serve as a crucial safety net. So uh, vendor or partner expertise, um, you, know, you can use that to resolve uh, support issues or train people or just provide consulting services to further extend or optimize your CRM system. So for recommendations, um, you should uh, give careful consideration to a broad variety of uh, factors that may impact rollout um, on the complexity and cost sides, as well as uh, paying attention to ongoing support and administration. So uh, you know, make sure you consider you know the geographic distribu distribution of your offices, any workforce mobility requirements, and number of users. Um, Remember that cloud is particularly compelling for companies with little, little or no internal IT resources. And uh, also, finally, remember uh, local consulting and support expertise available from either the vendor or certified partner um, should be examined. And that goes for both on-premises or cloud. Next slide, please. So the primary objective of a new CRM project is to uh, is usually to unify customer information across the, the company's front-facing activities, so like the sales, marketing, and customer service people. And um, you know, just because this is a goal, though, there's no guarantee that you're going to get that full 360-degree customer view that you may aspire to. So to really, to really realize a uh, truly comprehensive customer view, you should consider integrating your CRM system with your back office system. Front to back office integration enables front office users to access financial and transactional data associated with the customers without the need to leave their CRM application. And remember, this is data that's not normally generated um, or stored within a generated by or stored within a CRM system. So, this is data like invoice history, sales history, payment history, just other important back office related customer information. So, um, front to Actually, uh, front-to-back office integration also provides significant time and cost savings through process automation. So you can reduce or remove the need to re-key or re-verify information as it passes from one system to the next. So like some of these straight-through processes might be um, generating a quote in CRM based on pricing contained in the ERP application. Or another example would be like a populated order directly into the back office system through the CRM. Um, so Again, obviously, integration capability should be an integral part of your CRM evaluation. Uh, next slide, please. So, uh, in conclusion, uh, deployment type is an important choice, uh, but should be made in context of a broader variety of considerations. So, keep in mind functionality that you need, you know, as well as how you're going to roll it out. Um, you should be mindful of the expected lifespan of your CRM solution. Ensure that your requirements will be met across a variety of criteria, including functionality, cost, ease of maintenance, ability to customize, ability to integrate, and ability to empower users. Uh, both cloud and on-premises deployments uh, have their own particular benefits and drawbacks. Uh, some manifest themselves in the near term, while others come into play at a later stage in the solution lifecycle. Uh, and finally, uh, choosing a CRM solution, whether on-prem or cloud, to be uh, pretty time intensive and complicated. So as you continue your consideration of CRM solutions, just remember that we're here to help you. So uh, feel free to reach out. And uh, actually now before we get into the questions, um, I'm going to turn the presentation over to Miriam, who's going to provide a, a short as possible with Microsoft Dynamics CRM online. Thanks, Brian. So there's some great points about um, on-prem versus the cloud, and I just want to bring up the cloud version so we can take a look at some of the possibilities of the cloud, which is really robust um, and has a lot of uh, features and just practical things that you can be able to do in, in uh, Dynamics CRM. So actually right now I'm logged into the cloud version of Dynamics. I just want to go over a high level of what Dynamics CRM can do for you and your business. The first thing is that Dynamic CRM is there for you to acquire new customers or leads. So you want to bring those into your system during the sales cycle and then walk those leads through to, be, 
to sales opportunities. So you want to take opportunities in the system, generate quotes for those prospects or leads, hopefully turn those quotes into orders, and then eventually invoice those as those leads turn into customers. So we're taking quotes and turning those into orders and then changing those leads into actual customers. The second important thing about dynamic CRM is that not only can we take these the sales cycle from start to finish, but we can see information about the sales through things like the dashboard. So as a sales manager, for instance, I can look at my dashboard and see what's currently in the pipeline for my sales team. And you can see here I have some nice charts that are showing me qualified proposals, closed sales, etc. Also sales numbers can appear on your dashboards. Really handy ways to look at information at a high level and then also drill into the information by clicking on hyperlinks to take me to those records. So not only as a a salesperson, I can track my sales and walk those through from start to finish, but as a sales manager or as an owner of a business, I can see what's going on at a high bird's eye level. So that's the sales cycle. So that's where bringing new customers in or taking our current customers through new sales. Another important aspect of dynamic CRM is service. So we have these customers, but we really want to hone in on their needs and take care of those customers so we can keep and retain them. Um, in today's society, really there are a lot of options for our customers out there and they can go to other vendors and suppliers and we really don't want to lose them. So we want to keep track of what we're doing for those customers and make sure that we continue to improve the services. And so there's something called case management within Dynamic CRM that allows us to maintain and walk trouble tickets or issues from start to finish, close those out, and then hopefully improve our processes by analyzing those cases through such things as reporting, looking at dashboards, etc. so we can see what kind of issues we have, how long those issues are taking to resolve, and then what kind of solutions are we using. Perhaps we want to put those into bundled packages in our FAQ library. Maybe we want to create templates within the dynamic CRM system with complex um, but frequent responses to problems. Maybe we have a customer issue that's taken care of with a document. We can set that up as a template within the system and quickly send that off to our customer to resolve the issue. So that's another important feature is the service portion. And there's a lot of additional information you can add into Dynamics, such as articles and other services, even automation. So if we receive a ticket to our support at our domain.com, for instance, we could have the system be sophisticated to pick up a ticket into that mailbox and automatically create a case within Dynamics. A really awesome feature um, that's not too difficult to set up. We also have marketing. We can set up marketing campaigns, track those campaigns, track our results of the campaigns, find out what's working for us as far as a marketing standpoint and what is it, where are we getting the ROI or return on investment in our campaigns. Perhaps trade shows are the most lucrative, perhaps they're not maybe email blasts are a little better. Settings as an administrator we can go through the system and get as detailed as adding in additional fields, writing scripts, um, having certain workflows or automation set up. It's all included in the cloud or online version of Dynamic CRM which is super feature rich and allows us to do pretty much anything in the system. So it's really the, the cloud version of Dynamic CRM is um, really above all. It, it does a lot of things in Dynamics that the on-prem version can do. In fact, there really isn't much that the cloud version cannot do. So it's really great as far as a feature set and allowing you to take um, every feature of any CRM system and put it into a single application that also integrates in with your um, Office 365 solution. So Brian, I don't know if we have any questions that came in, um, but we can dive into those. Yep. Um, yeah, there's a a couple here. I'm going to take. I'll take the, the two that came in, and we'll see what okay. else comes in. Um, first question I had was: uh, So, which does Qantas CRM recommend more often, on permits or cloud CRM? And so, um, I, I'd say that 99% of the time, um, we found that uh, the cloud version uh, meets the needs and or actually exceeds the needs uh, for, for our customers. So. Uh, most of the time, 99% of the time, um, our customers go with a, the cloud version. 
Um, the other question here, here is uh, how does dynamic CRM, CRM online integrate with accounting systems? And um, again, I'll take that one. Um, there's a connector that integrates CRM with certain versions of uh, Dynamics GP or NAV, AX, and uh, SL. And then there's uh, third party integrations for uh, other ERP systems. So um, if you have a specific software version uh, in mind, um, our contact information is going to be uh, on, the, on the last screen here. Um, actually, oh, can you pull that up, Aaron? Yeah. Well, I don't know. Maybe you might have to go back to the uh, to your dynamics. The other questions come in. So anyhow, um, but the, the, the phone number and the uh, email addresses will be up there, so you can contact us uh, online. Uh, but actually, I'll probably just give you a call right after this, but our, we need to get the details for what you're looking for the easiest way. So look for a call from you later. And while I was talking there, it looks like another question came through. Um, it says, I understand how you could test something on premises, but how would you test something like customization or automation in cloud CRM without messing up your live system? And I'm going to I'm going to toss that over to Walter. Okay, so um, sounds like you're asking about um, not wanting to test on your production environment, um, and in that case, uh, the cloud version of Dynamics CRM actually offers a sandbox. Uh, if you have a 25 plus user account, you get that sandbox for free. And what I mean by that term, sandbox, is you get actually a second instance of Dynamics CRM in the cloud or online that you can use as just a playground or a play box um, where you can make changes that don't really affect your live data. You could also use that sandbox in order to um, actually deploy new changes. So there are something called solutions in Dynamics CRM. But if you think, want to think about it, it's just a file of changes that you're going to be making. So you can create a solution that will capture, let's say, new fields or form changes to screens and capture those inside of that solution in your sandbox. And then what you can do when you're ready and you've tested in your sandbox and everybody thinks it looks great, you can export that solution and import it into your production or your live environment online. And so it's a great way to have that two areas, one for testing and one for live. If you're not fortunate enough to have that um, automatic sandbox, you can always purchase a sandbox. It's really nominal fee for Microsoft, and you could use that just for a month or two or um, the entirety of the use of your system if you find it beneficial. Uh, the cost is very small. If you want more information, we can always give you more information on sandboxes, uh, but they're, I really highly recommend having one in your environment if you want to make changes. Okay, that looks like it for the questions. So I'm going to wrap up. Um, I'd like to thank everyone for attending today. Um, I know your time is uh, really valuable, so I hope you found uh, what we presented valuable too. Uh, if you have any questions that come up after uh, we end the presentation, just uh, reach out to us at 844-244-6310. That's 844-244-6310. We'd love to hear from you. Um, we also have a white paper on this very topic we covered today. And you can find that white paper at quantacrm.com slash events. And uh, you're going to see a bunch of other white papers up there, too, on uh, other topics. I believe this one, I think, is the third one down. And again, today's presentation was recorded and will be posted to quantacrm.com slash events by the end of the day tomorrow. So if you know some details or you know someone uh, you think might benefit from the presentation, you can find the recorded webinar there. So again, I want to thank everyone for attending, and uh, go out and have an amazing day. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody.